Hi people! I know why you're here. You're here to learn about the external and internal anatomy of the toe. It is important for us to know about the external and internal anatomy of the toad since it is very similar to a human's anatomy. So if you can't find a dead body, you can just grab a toad. <laughs> Kidding aside, toads are also invasive species. Thus, it is alright for us to use them for experiments. This is Lexery and you're watching Let's Do This! Most of the time, people don't know how to differentiate a regular frog from a toad. Frogs live mostly in water. They prefer to jump. Female frogs lay eggs in clusters. They have a slim body type, their skin is thin and smooth, and they have longer hind legs. They have higher, rounder, bulgier eyes, has small teeth, distinct brow spot, and a prominent sacral hump. Toads, however, most of the time live in land. They prefer walking or doing small hops. Female toads lay eggs in chains. They have a stout body type. Their skin is thick and rough. They have shorter hind legs. They have lower football-shaped eyes, no teeth, and a parotid gland. However, frogs are quite general. Toads fall in the frog category. Thus, all toads are frogs, but not all frogs are toads. Now let's focus on the external body parts of the toad. Please direct your focus on the screen so as to get a better idea as to where the parts are located. The body can be divided into the axial, which is composed of the head and trunk, and appendicular region, composed of the limbs. Parts of the head are the snout, which is at the anterior end, the external nares or nostrils, which serve as an inlet and outlet of air. Aside from the nostrils, did you know that they can breathe through their skin? Also, unlike humans, their skin is loosely attached to their body. This is because of the lack of loose connective tissues. Anyway, here are its eyes. Of course, it is for seeing. This consists of the upper and lower eyelids and the nictitating membrane, which can be used for protection or to moisten the eye while still maintaining vision. The tympanic membrane behind each eye, which facilitates hearing. It can receive sound both in air and water, allowing the toad to hear well in both surroundings. The tympanic membrane may also be referred to as the eardrums, the brow spot or the white spot at the mid-dorsal part of the head. However, the brow spot for the toads are not that distinct compared to the frog. This does not serve any purpose. It only marks where a part of the brain reached the surface before the head fully developed. Then we have the trunk, which is divided into the thoracic or chest region, which is the anterior half, and the abdominal or lumbar region, which is the posterior half. In the thoracic region behind the eardrum, you can see the parotid gland. The parotid gland secretes alkaloid substances which smell toxic to predators, thus sending predators away. Moving on, what we see on the ventral portion of the frog is the abdominal region, while at the dorsal is the lumbar region. For frogs, located at the lumbar region is their sacral hump which emerged because of the lump of the pelvic girdle. At the end of the trunk is a small opening called the anus where waist exits. Now let's hop into the appendicular region of the toad. The appendicular region comprises of the forelimbs and the hind limbs. The forelimb is composed of the upper arm which is directly attached to the trunk. Extending from that is the middle forearm. Then the corpus or wrist then distal to that is the manus or hand, then the four fingers, just like what our arms comprise, but very different in physical appearance. Aside from that, they have the prepolis, which is another digit on the inner side of the hand. The four limbs function as support for walking or sitting or landing from a hop. Then there are the hind limbs, similar to the four limbs but at the posterior end. Directly attached to the body mass is the thigh, followed by the shank, then the tarsus or ankle, the pes or foot, 
which is distal to the tarsus, the toes or digits, usually five. Some toads may have a prehallux or the small sixth toe. Connecting the toes to one another is the web, which extends from the skin. The web creates more surface area to help them swim when they find themselves in water. The function of their hind limbs is to produce power for hopping. Now let's dive into the internal body parts of the toad. Before dissecting the toad, take a look at the ventral view of the toad. There you can see the line elbow, and below that is the ventral abdominal vein. Do not cut along that line, so as to avoid blood from spreading over your specimen. What you should do is to make this cut. So there are two cholemic cavities found in the toad, also in the frog. The pleuroperitoneal cavity and the pericardial cavity. The pleuroperitoneal cavity occupies most of the trunk of the amphibian. This holds the lungs, the esophagus, stomach, small and large intestines, liver, pancreas, kidneys, ovary, oviduct, testis, gallbladder, urinary bladder, spleen, and fat bodies. Lining all these visceral organs is a fragile epithelium called the peritoneum. Meanwhile, the pericardial cavity at the thoracic region holds the heart. Let's start with lungs or the respiratory organs of the toad. The esophagus, which connects the pharynx to the stomach in order for food to move from the mouth to the stomach. The stomach is where food is broken down. It is attached to the dorsal body wall by its mesentery, the mesogaster. The region of the stomach which joins the esophagus is the cardiac region. The narrower portion is the pyloric region, and the part that joins with the intestine is the pylorus, and within that is the pyloric valve or pyloric sphincter. When cutting into the stomach, you can see the rugae or the longitudinal folds. Then we have the small intestine, where digestion and absorption happen. Here is its duodenum, where the common bile duct enters, then its ileum. The mesenterium or mesentery proper suspends the small intestine to the dorsal body wall. Connected to the ileum is the large intestine which ends with the anus or vent. It absorbs water to solidify the wastes. The large intestine consists of its rectum and cloaca. Attached to the ventral side of the cloaca is the urinary bladder which mainly stores urine. The large intestine is suspended to the body wall by the mesorectum or mesocolon. Embedded in this is the spleen, which functions as a reservoir for blood. Then here is the liver, which occupies the anterior half of the pleuroperitoneal cavity. The liver secretes bile for the digestion of fats. The bile is stored in the gallbladder. When the gallbladder is full, the bile is then secreted into the common bile duct. Also, the pancreas, which produces pancreatic juice, insulin, and digestive enzymes. The pancreas is suspended in the gastrohepatoduodenal ligament, or lesser omentum. The ends of this organ are touching the liver and near the pylorus. They also have kidneys, which filter out impurities in the body. Then they also have the gonads, the ovaries for reproduction in females, and for males, the testes. Then the oviduct, they also have fat bodies that store energy. The digestive process of the frog is very similar to that of the human. The organs in the pleuroperitoneal cavity of the toads are very the same as that of the digestive system of the human. When eating, the food is pulled into the mouth of the frogs, where it is crushed into bits. The pharynx helps the food to be swallowed through the esophagus, then to the stomach. Then, it goes to the small intestine, then to the large intestine. The wastes are then expelled through the anus. What's different is that the frog doesn't have an appendix. This is because of evolution. The appendix is not very important in the human body or even to other animals. Thus, there is not much significant difference 
if there is no appendix in the frog's body or even in that of the human body. Lastly, but not posteriorly, the heart. As we all know, the heart pumps blood throughout the body. The heart of a toad has three chambers, the ventricle and two auricles, different to the four-chambered heart of the human. There are also two small chambers which are the conus arteriosus. These direct the blood into the right chamber. That is all for the video. I hope you learned something. If you want to learn more, you can check out my previous videos. The links are down below. You can give a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching. See you next time.